Story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. I lied and told him that I was getting gassy and I needed to go home. We say goodbye in the restaurant and he walks me to my car. I drive off and I check if he's following me. No, he wasn't. As soon as I get home, I decide to order pizza because I was still hungry. I mean, I actually was not gassy. While I'm waiting for the pizza to arrive, I run a bath and put my music on as loud as possible. By the way, I live alone and my house is pretty big. I decide to take a quick shower to take my makeup off and five minutes into my shower, my phone starts to ring. It's my date. He says, are you sure you don't want me to come over? You look lonely. I told him, how do you know what I look like? Then he says, just send me your address. I did not. I hung up and blocked him right away. I get out of the shower and I hear the doorbell ring. When I open the door, nobody is there. What happens next is terrifying. Part two is up. Story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me. Disclaimer is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. Two years ago, I signed up to Hinge. I matched with a really cute guy. I lived in my city, drove an expensive car, and was looking for fun. At the time, I was not looking for a relationship. I just wanted to have some fun. It was lust at first sight. We were both attracted to each other, and he couldn't keep his hands off me. Now, I did like this, but he was taking it a little bit far. We were sitting at a booth and had some drinks. This is when he kissed me. He did not ask me for permission, and he put his hand on my thigh. I let him do it because I knew I was having fun. But then he started inviting himself over to my apartment. I told him that I was definitely not comfortable with him coming over. He made a joke about following me home and coming in and doing whatever he wanted to me. I laughed it off but was creeped out. I told him I got gassy and that I needed to go home. What was about to happen was terrifying. Part two is up. Story time about how my date broke into my house and tried to choke me. I opened my front door and nobody is there. Remember, I thought it was the pizza guy. I look closer, and that's when I see a dark figure standing in the corner. Can you imagine how scary that is? My knees instantly started to shake, and that's when I realized it was my date. I told him if he left now, I wouldn't call the cops. Then he runs at me while taking off his belt, puts the belt around my neck, and starts squeezing so hard. Almost immediately passed out. I was wearing a bathrobe. He ripped it off of me. Then he said the creepiest thing. I want to see what you look like passed out. Then the doorbell rings. It's the pizza guy. He finally lets go and tells me that he'll be back. I run outside, and the pizza guy stays with me until the cops come. Unfortunately, the police never found him. He obviously lied about his name. I'm afraid he's going to come back for me. What should I do? Am I the asshole for leaving a vacation that I planned for my girlfriend after her friends came along? My girlfriend Sarah, 29 male, and I, male 28, have been dating for five years. I wanted to go on a vacation with her to celebrate, so I planned the trip for several months. I decided on skiing, snowboarding, and other winter activities, and the activity seemed perfect. I was looking forward to it because I wanted to propose to her at the end of the trip, but five days before the trip, she dropped the ball that she invited two of her friends to meet her there. I was upset because I wanted to spend one-on-one -on -one time with Sarah for our anniversary. And it was clear it was just for us, but she still insisted they come. Am I the asshole for leaving a vacation that I planned for my girlfriend after her friends came along? I figured we could make changes to our plans and I would still be able to propose to her privately. She essentially blew me off for her friends and we didn't get any private time. After three days of being in second place, I decided to leave the trip and I headed home. I told Sarah why I was leaving and she was upset. Her and her friends ganged up on me and said we were all having a great time and she thinks I'm being a jerk for making her pick between her friends and me. I've never had issues with her friends prior to the trip and I never made her pick between us. Now I'm at home and thinking about everything and Sarah said that I ruined the trip. My husband and I have six children and live in a four bedroom home. As you can imagine, space is tight. My husband and I have one room, the two eldest share, the middle two share, and the youngest two share. This question pertains to my eldest 18 female. She recently started university in September and moved to live in student accommodation there. So she kept her weekend job here and planned to travel in and stay here on Friday night and leave to go back to university on Sunday after work. She's looking for a job closer to her university but hasn't found one that pays as well as her current one. When she left, I told our second oldest 16 female that the room was now hers alone. We sold my eldest bed and wardrobe and drawers to make more space and instructed my second eldest to leave one drawer free for the eldest to put her belongings when she returned for her weekends. When eldest returned on her first weekend back, she asked what happened to her bed and wardrobe and I explained the above and that she doesn't live here anymore so she doesn't need it at all. We provided her with a camp bed to sleep in the room with that she could fold up and store when she left. She was unhappy and went to bed. Later that night, I checked her Twitter and she had tweeted, I feel like I don't have a home anymore with a sad face. I was furious that she brought our family business into social media and woke her up to tell her so. We argued and I ultimately told her that if she doesn't feel like this is her home anymore, then she needs to leave and get out of my house. She did, and my husband was able to find out that she made the last train back to her university town that evening. The following Friday, she messaged me to say, very bluntly, I'm sorry for tweeting about how I felt. I won't do it again. She has also either deleted her Twitter account or changed her account name and blocked me, so I can't verify if she'll stick to this. However, I told her that I forgave her and that she's welcome to return again. She's not returned home since that weekend. Throughout the entirety of the month, she didn't come home once and has been instead traveling to and from work both Saturday and Sunday instead of coming to our home. I messaged to ask her when break begins to find out when she was returning and she said that her flatmate's parents have told her that she can spend the break with them. That's what she'll be doing.
was I really wrong in how I dealt with this? That I've pushed my daughter away? My husband thinks so, and so does my second eldest, but I believe that I handled it well. Perhaps I shouldn't have told her to leave, but does that warrant her abandoning her family? Am I in the wrong for telling my daughter to leave for embarrassing me on social media? My best friend, 31 male, and I, 27 male, have a tradition of taking a yearly weekend trip together that's phone-free. We've been doing this for over a decade now. These weekend trips consist of us staying in a suite and exploring the city, not traversing the wilderness so it's not like we're completely disconnected. Still, we like to keep one on hand for navigation and emergency purposes, and it will usually be friend's phone that we brought along. Friend and I left our trip two Fridays ago to make use of the long weekend. This was the first time I've gone on one of these trips since my wife and I moved in together, got engaged, or got married. However, we were dating for the last two years worth of trips, 2021 and 2022, and she seemed fine during that time. I would just tell her that I was going to be busy for the weekend and she'd leave me alone. I understand there are different expectations once you get married, but I didn't expect for the 180 in behavior. My wife all but demanded I take my phone as well in case she needed to get a hold of me despite her having friend's number. I let her know that I had arrived and immediately after she was texting me and asking me how things were. Then again, asking me another question when I didn't respond to the first one. I eventually muted our text conversation because I was sick of the phone buzzing. She called me a few hours later and asked why I wasn't responding to her text. I reiterated that this was supposed to be a no phone weekend and kept the call short despite her trying to drag out the conversation. She called me once more after this. When I answered the phone and found out it wasn't an emergency, I simply turned my phone off. The calls then started coming in from my friend and he followed suit. We spent the rest of the weekend with our phones off until the drive back on Monday. I called my wife and informed her when we were 30 minutes away from my place and she was furious. She said that there ended up being an emergency. Her sister got into a car accident that won't affect her long term, but still resulted in broken bones, and that I had just ignored her the entire time when she needed me. I told her that I was very sorry about her sister, but it wasn't my fault she had essentially forced my hand into cutting off means of communication. She went to stay with a friend before I arrived home that night and has since came home, but she's still fuming. So, am I in the wrong for missing an actual emergency because I turned my phone off to avoid my wife's unnecessary contact attempts during my tech-free weekend? Am I the asshole for yelling just leave me the F alone during a family dinner at a crowded restaurant? My brother, 26 male, and I, 18 female, have never got along. He spent my entire childhood controlling everything I did, watched, and even ate. At Christmas, he pissed me off because I was proud of myself for buying my first vehicle and he called my truck a POS. Then said to our parents, insurance companies statistically have higher rates for female drivers than males. Absolutely insinuating they shouldn't put me on their policy because then he'd get booted off. And this past weekend, it was our brother's birthday and he asked me when I'm moving out. I said, excuse me, and he said, you're 18 now. You need to get your own place. Am I the asshole for yelling just leave me the F alone during a family dinner at a crowded restaurant? I said to him, you're not even on your own yet since you haven't bothered paying a single penny of rent in seven years. He was fuming and tried to change the topic. But my mom made a comment about that changing soon and brother's girlfriend was like, what? So I told her he moved out at 19 and hasn't paid our parents a penny of rent all these years. She was livid because we didn't know it, but she'd been paying my brother's rent for two years because he led her to believe he was paying rent. Wow. My brother then said that I should focus on my current job and forget about wasting time with college. He then made more comments and I told him to shut the F up. Am I wrong for refusing to buy my husband an expensive car even though I have the money? My husband, male 35, and I, female 30, have been married for the past 10 years and we have five amazing daughters together. Because of that, I dropped out of college and have been a stay-at-home mom for the past 10 years when we had our eldest daughter. My husband is a breadwinner and I take care of all the chores and childcare. While my husband earns quite a bit of money, which allows us to live comfortably, he is also obsessed with budgeting, thus I typically only have enough for household expenses. For the past five years, I have been working on a series of books. I've been writing everywhere I could. Five minutes here, five minutes there, and while I sacrifice a lot of sleep, I have managed to finish my series, unbeknown to my husband. I kept it a secret because he always considered it a waste of time. It was tough, but I managed to get an agent and was incredibly lucky to get a deal and have my series published. I was ecstatic, and when they told me how big my advance would be, I almost fainted. It's much more than I expected for a first-time deal. It's in the higher five digits. Damn! I didn't get into book writing shit! I haven't told my husband yet and I had to borrow money from my sister to get an accountant. Ideally, I want that money saved up should something happen because I honestly don't know the details of our home finances or for our kids' future. Whatever will be needed, plus I would love to have some spending money without asking my husband Greg. However, Greg found my contract and he is now demanding I get him a new car for Christmas. A very expensive new car which would cost majority of my advance. I politely refused, saying that he didn't need a car that expensive and that money was supposed to be saved up. I tried to explain my position, but he wouldn't have it. He basically called me an asshole without actually using the word. He said that because he supported me all these years, I owe him. And without him and his money, I wouldn't be where I am now. Oh my god. Uh, hello, she has been staying home raising your five kids. 
That shit is way, way harder than any job you can do from nine to five. Don't even, ew, the fact that he even says that says a lot about his character and it, I really don't like that. It makes me, ugh, 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 if he said that, ugh. He's told me that I either buy him a car or I have to start paying for household expenses half and half. Okay, does that mean he's going to take care of the kids and do all of the household chores and stuff half and half? That's how it works, right? Because now you're bringing in income, you have to cut the parent roles in half too. So he needs to be wiping asses on the kids, taking care of them, dropping off to school and such, right? If that's how it's going to work. It's not just paying the bills. The thing is, I would still be a stay-at-home mom. I don't know if my book will be a success. For all I know, this will be the only money I will ever get from my book deal because it'll flop. I don't like him. I know you have five kids with him, but like, I really don't like him. And the fact that he said all of these things to you shows his character and he is not a man. I don't like it. A real man would be so happy for you and be like, wow, babe, good for you. My hard work. Look at my babe. She's a book writer. Look at her. Like, she'd be like, you know what? You've worked hard. You did all this and raised five kids. Oh, he sounds insecure. This is why you should always keep your phone charged. A girl named Marissa came home from school at around 3 p.m. She walked in the door and told her mom that some random number kept calling her all day. Her mom told her the person may have the wrong number and just to ignore it. Marissa said okay and begins to do her homework. A couple hours later, she receives a phone call from the same number. Marissa answers at this time and says, Hello? The man then says, we finally found you. Don't worry, bunny. Marissa begins to panic and tells her mom what just happened. Her mom's face goes blank and says, what did the man just call you? Marissa says, he called me bunny. Her mom yells and says, grab your stuff. We need to leave. Marissa confused, packs her things and gets into the red car. Her mom begins driving fast and turns on the radio. The radio says, the baby named Marissa who was kidnapped in the hospital 10 years ago has been found and police are searching for a red car. Marissa looks at the woman and says, who are you? The woman looks back and says, 